Once upon a time, there was a cookie that fell from the sky, and then it rolled to the right 240 degrees, and suddenly, ring, Cookie Monster ate it. I'm going to show you how to animate in Keynote. Actually, you'll learn pretty much everything you'll ever need to know to animate in Keynote, which is these 10 things, which then we're going to apply to create a nice little story at the very end of this tutorial. Check the description for timestamps to jump to any of these sections, but really, you don't want to miss a thing. If you want to download this presentation, just go to grumo.com slash charanas. More about charanas later. Let's get started. So for most animations in Keynote, you're only going to need to use buildings, actions, and build-outs. Buildings wow. is how things appear on a screen. Actions are all the animations you can apply to objects. And build-outs is how things disappear from the screen. All right. So it's great because in Keynote, you have 39 buildings. Bim, bam, boom, boom. Here are all of them. You have 10 actions and you have 38 build-outs or 38 ways things can disappear. So imagine all the possibilities for you to create all kinds of animations. All right, so the simplest animation will have a building, an action, and a build-out. So let's say that the building is to appear, then we're going to move the cookie to the right, that's going to be the move action, and then disappear for the build-out. To animate any item, all you have to do is select that item, then you go to where it says animate on the top right corner, and then you have buildings, actions, and build-outs. In our case, our building could be any of these ones. We're going to say appear, and we can preview it as many times as we want to by clicking the preview button. Then we're going to add an action, which is going to be move, and it's going to move to the right, which can adjust how far it moves by just dragging it and how long it takes. Let's say we want it to take 1.5 seconds. And finally, we're going to add a build up, which is going to be a disappear. Now, if we want to preview the animation, we can either go to play and play the slideshow, or we have the build order menu, which allows us to see all the animations that have been applied and in which order. And we can rearrange them as well if we want to by dragging and dropping. And if we want to play them all back, we can select them all and click preview. And you can see exactly how the animation happens. Now we're going to learn how to apply multiple actions to the same object. So objects can only have one built-in animation and one build-out animation, but they can have multiple actions applied to it. So in this case, the cook is going to drop as the building, for the action is going to move and rotate at the same time, and for the build-out is going to burn, yeah. So if we come out of the presentation, the way we can replicate this is by selecting the cookie, we go to building, add an effect, drop, then we can add an action, which is going to be move, and we can adjust how far it moves as before, and how long it takes, let's say 1.5 seconds. Now we can add another action, it's going to be rotate, and we can see it's rotating in the wrong direction, so we're going to change it to clockwise. We're going to make sure it lasts the same amount as the move, so 1.5 seconds, and now we're going to change the angle of rotation to 240 degrees. Now we're going to play back the animation, click preview, it comes down, moves, and then rotates. But we want the move and rotation to happen at the same time. And the way you do that is that you select the action that you want to do simultaneously, in this case, rotate. And then under Start, you're going to say with Build 2, which in this case is Move. And now we can see that the move and rotation happen at the same time. And now we can also add a Build Out if you want to, which we selected it to be Flame. So we learn how to apply multiple actions to a single object, but you can also apply multiple actions and animations to multiple objects at the same time, like in this animation, where the banana is going to hit the cookie and make the ice cream disappear. Let's replicate this animation. So we're going to click on build order to see all our animations. And the first thing we're going to do is have the banana 
rotate back a little bit. So we go to action, add effect, rotate, and we're gonna make sure it rotates clockwise. And we can adjust how far it goes here. We don't need to go that far. That's good, let's play it back. Okay, a little bit faster, 0.8 seconds, preview. Okay, and now we want it to move forward to hit the cookie. So we're gonna add another rotation. Click Add Action, Rotate, and we want it to go a lot faster. So we're going to decrease the time to something like 0.3 seconds, let's see. That's pretty fast. And we want it to rotate past the cookie, something like there, preview it. Now let's animate the cookie. The cookie has to move from left to right. We're going to select the cookie, add the action move, and we want it to move really fast past the ice cream and beyond the screen. So to see beyond the slide, we have to reduce the size of the slide. For that, we go to zoom, set it to 50. Now we can see beyond the slide. We can move it there. We can zoom back in to zoom fit slide and we can preview it. And we can make it a little bit faster. There you go, that's pretty fast. And we can change the acceleration to none. Maybe make it faster. Duration 0.4. There we go. Okay. And now we're going to add rotation to the cookie as well as it gets hit by the banana. So we click Add Action, Rotate. And let's just play it, preview it. We cannot preview it because the cookie is beyond the screen. So what we can do is move the rotation on top of move so you can preview it. Okay. And we probably want to make the rotation a little bit faster and make sure it rotates more. Preview. Okay. And now we can make the rotation and movement happen at the same time. So we select move and click start with build three, which is the rotation and we can play it back. Preview. Boom. So now the cookie is moving to the right and rotating too. Perfect. Now let's animate the ice cream disappearing. So we're going to go to build out in this case. We're going to add the effect diffuse. And that's too slow. So we're going to make it a lot faster. Maybe 0.5 seconds. There you go. But if we play this back, we can see the ice cream takes too long to explode. So what we're going to do is click with build three and preview it. It happens too early. So this is where we can add a little bit of delay. So let's add 0.2 seconds of delay from when the cookie starts moving. And now we can see that it explodes right at the time we want it. So if we preview everything back, we select all the builds and click preview, we see that happens. Now there is a little problem here. We can see that the banana goes beyond the cookie before the cookie starts moving. So the way to solve that issue is by clicking the rotation of the cookie and saying with build two. All right. And now it moves too early. So we can add a little bit of delay. So let's say 0.2 seconds. And now it works perfectly. Boom, boom, love it. And this is how you animate multiple objects and sequence them so everything happens in the order that you want to. Let's talk about changing the pivot point of an object. In Keynote, you cannot change the pivot point of an object. And as you remember, on the previous animation, the banana pivoted from the top of the banana. And by default in Keynote, the pivot point of all objects is the geometrical center. So in this cookie, if we go and rotate it, it's rotating around the center. And the same for the banana. So if I want the banana to rotate from the top, I have to do this little nifty trick. First thing we're going to do is make sure that the rotation is set to zero. Now we're going to create a copy of the banana, Command C, Command V. Now we're going to flip it twice, horizontally and vertically. And we want to position the second banana right where we want for the banana to rotate. 
So if we create a group right now, we select both bananas and right click and create a group. If we rotate it now, you can see it rotates around the place what we wanted. The problem is that we don't want the second banana to appear. So we have to make it transparent. So let's ungroup it. And now we would change the opacity. We cannot change the opacity of a group. So we're going to ungroup it because it's a group. We're going to delete the eyes. And now we can change the opacity to zero. Now we select the second banana. We create a group, right click and group. And now when we rotate, you can see it rotates around the pivot point that we desire. And this is the only way that you can change the pivot point in Keynote. Motion paths allow you to animate any object along a path. And this is how it works. To create a motion path animation, first you need to create a path. Click on shape, then click on draw with the pen tool. And then let's create a path really quickly. Now select both the path and the object you want to animate over the path, in this case, the cookie. Then go to Format, Shapes and Lines, and then click on Make Motion Path from Shape. Then you have to select the path, and now the cookie has been animated along the path. So to preview it, we click on the cookie, click on Preview, and we can see the cookie animated. We can change the duration to make it slower if you want to. We can also enable Align to Path, which will align the cookie to the path, and we can preview it. And the cookie rotates along the path. And we can also edit the path by clicking on these little dots and adjusting the path whichever way we want to. And we can always delete the original path, and the animation will remain. And that's how you create a motion path in Keynote. Animating groups in Keynote. It's very simple. Just select all the objects you want to animate, then create a group by right clicking and select group. And now this is a group. Now we can apply buildings, actions, and build outs. Let's say we want to just move everything to the right. And there you go. That's how you do it. Now, there are some limitations with groups in Keynote. You cannot animate anything inside the group. So let's say that I wanted to animate the cookie now independently. I cannot do that. You can see buildings are grayed out, actions and build outs are grayed out. So that's one limitation of groups. The other one is that let's ungroup this. Let's say that these three items had animations independently, like a appear animation. And if we go to build order, we can see there's three independent animations. The moment you create a group, let's say, let's select the three items and right click and create group. See what happens to the animations. They're gone. So those are the two limitations. You cannot animate anything inside a group and any animations added to any object previous to becoming a group will be lost. But once they're a group, you can animate them like any other object. Another way to animate objects is using Magic Move. Magic Move is a type of transition between slides that will animate any objects that two slides have in common. So for example, let's copy these three items, the banana, the cookie, and the ice cream, to a second slide. And now we can move these items anywhere we want to, and we can change their rotation and their scale. If we want to, we can make them bigger or smaller. We can do whatever we want to with them. And we're going to add now the magic move transition. Click on the slide, go to animate, click on add effect, select magic move. And you can see now that the transition is calculating the animation between this slide and this slide. So if we follow the banana, the banana is going to go from left to right. Let's play it back. And the cook is going to go from right to left, as you can see that. And the ice cream is just going to become smaller. Let's preview that. And that's all calculated automatically in that transition. And any item that is not on the second slide will simply fade out. So the chorizo fades out. 
and that's a clever way to animate objects that are in common between two slides. Apply motion blur to your animations. If you want your animations to appear smoother, you should enable motion blur. Just go to Keynote Preferences and enable Apply Motion Blur. Now, when we play back our animation, it'll show up smoother. If we take it out, we can see a slight difference. It's a little bit choppier than when we applied motion blur. Let's apply animation to text. This is a very common thing to do in presentations. Let's say you have three bullet points, you would select the bullet points, and then you can add a build-in like appear, and you can select by bullet, delivery by bullet. And when we preview it, each bullet will be shown independently when we click with our mouse. All right. Now we can also have a lot more control. We can decide that we want to show the animation by word or character. Let's try character and preview it. And you can see now this creates some kind of typewriter effect, but you can do that with any other type of building animation. Let's say drop and preview it or fly in, or wipe, or flip. You have a lot of control as to how the animation is applied to the text. And now let's put everything together into a nice little animated story, all done just with Keynote. And the story goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful, yummy banana that was married to a very crunchy, cookie and suddenly a very nice tasty ice cream showed up and distracted our crunchy cookie and the ice cream got really happy but the banana got very angry and said you know what you and that ice cream can go f yourself and she was very lonely and then this big chorizo man showed up and she fell in love immediately. So they made love and they had little triplet choranas or choranitas. And that is, my friends, the end. And that's it. Now, if you want to download the templates for this keynote animation, just go to grumo.com forward slash choranas. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.